Ryan Harson is indeed keeping his job. He will get a year or two at Auburn. And that is a surprising development after the way that that week kind of played out where we're sitting here wondering what is next? How does he possibly keep his job after you hear these rumors come out about infidelity? You see all these players come out saying that they, Brian Harson didn't treat him well and all the things that happened with his, his coaching staff and the transfer portal. And after all of it, Brian Harson is still keeping his job. Now, if I'm an Auburn fan, I'm looking at this and hoping that it's a repeat of 2003, Jetgate, right? Tommy Tuberville is apparently going to be out as Auburn's head coach. They're flying, they're flying to interview Bobby Petrino, and then they basically get caught with their pants down, flirting with another woman. And we find out that Auburn had obviously this plan in place to get rid of Tommy Tuberville and move on. Instead, that doesn't happen. He comes back 2004, undefeated season. Everybody knows how all that turned out. And there's this hope that if Auburn can take a page out of its own playbook and, and maybe have a year like it has in the past where backs against the wall, that 2022 can be a magical season. And I think there are, there, there's a good reason to believe that just because you've seen it before. If there's ever a program in all college football to come out of this and be all right, it's Auburn. But if we're going to compare it to 2003, or I guess 2004, we should probably have a little bit of context. Jason Campbell was a future first-round quarterback. He kind of thrived in that system that they brought in. They had a two-running back system, of course, with Ronnie and Cadillac. They had, oh, by the way, the number one defense off college football in 2004, led by a certain Gene Chizik. So you look at this personnel, that the way that it's built now, and you would look at that quarterback situation and say, well, um... I don't necessarily see a Jason Campbell on that roster. And I got another thought on that quarterback situation that we'll get that we're going to get to in a little bit here. But I think the bigger issue is that the SEC back in 2004 was a lot different than what it is now. There wasn't a program like Georgia that is at this level. There wasn't a program like Alabama that is at this level. There is such a difference right now with the talent disparity. And if you want to look at recruiting numbers, with the way that teams are spending compared to Auburn, I think that's a bigger part of this and why the playing field doesn't feel as level as maybe it once did and when it used to allow for those random seasons to happen and a team like 2013 Auburn could go to a national championship because there wasn't this overwhelming amount of talent with some of the big time rivals. And obviously Alabama had won three out of four national titles. So maybe that's not the best example, but you get what I'm saying. It's a different task that we're talking about here. And so I do wonder about that moving forward. And I, I think that there are a lot of other things that we have to figure out. And mainly for Brian Arson, he needs to figure out his offense. This is a guy who, by the way, still doesn't have an offensive coordinator as of this recording. Austin Davis, that whole thing happened six weeks in and out, do out the door. And now he is left to try and hire someone when, let's not forget, one of the things that came out in the midst of this bizarre week that he had was he couldn't even get approval from the higher ups about how much he would pay in this coordinator and that coordinator and how much he can offer for this vacancy. If Auburn really is aligned, as they have said in these statements, and there truly is that alignment, and it's not all these different important people out on islands doing their own thing, acting in their own best interests, then Auburn will come out and have a big time splashy hire at the offensive coordinator position. Easier said than done. I think that's what, what, what I think an Auburn fan can hope for at this point. But what also gives me pause about this situation is the quarterback room. If there's going to be any sort of comp to 2004, I think the quarterback room has to change yet again. TJ Finley, Zach Calzada, and then getting the Oregon transfer, Robbie Ashford, that is a major overhaul in the quarterback room. No doubt about it. Brian Harson has done that through the transfer portal in the year plus that he's been on the job. There's not an answer there. There's just not. And this is an Auburn team that was 12th in the SEC in quarterback rating ahead of Texas A&M, who was led by Zach Calzada and Vandy. So there is obviously a, a big, big need at the most important position right now for Auburn. And if I'm Brian Harson, I'm looking at this situation, I'm saying, you know what? My job is on the line. I don't care who I upset. 
I need to find my guy at quarterback. And you might be able to see where I'm leaning with this, but I think you should go out and get JT Daniels. There are some people who just heard me say that and roll their eyes. Uh, he is so overrated. He is not worth the five-star hype and I'm not buying in and what a waste that would be. To borrow a phrase from Scott Frost, who has been blasted for the, the, the passing up of Joe Burrow back in 2018 when he entered the transfer portal, is he better than what we got? Scott Frost, that comment was kind of taken out of context. We talked about that in a previous video about Joe Burrow and his meteoric rise. But if I'm Brian Harson, I have to ask that question. Is JT Daniels better than what we got? Yeah, he is. And I've seen that it, against SEC competition. And if you think TJ Finley is the answer or Zach Calzada is the answer, they're all of a sudden going to turn a new leaf. I think we're watching a different sport. I've seen JT Daniels at the end of the 2020 season look like that guy. Yeah, he got hurt in the first part of 2021. That's why he lost his job. Most coaches would have turned back to JT Daniels. Kirby Smart, not most coaches. I would try and give JT Daniels that opportunity. If I'm JT Daniels, I'm looking at that backfield duo. You've got Tank, you've got Hunter. That is really promising to be able to work with, and you need that opportunity. Also, for Auburn, if you're Brian Harson, you're worried about maybe potentially upsetting your quarterbacks already in that room. All of those guys, the guys that I brought up, those three guys earlier, they all transferred as undergrads. So, yeah, they could leave, but they'd have to sit out for another year. And if you're just getting JT Daniels for one year anyways, then I don't really necessarily think you have to worry about this mass exodus at the quarterback position. Or maybe, you know what, you just say, I don't care because I'm not worried about beyond that. I need to save my job now. I think this situation in Auburn in 2022 is a little bit like 2018 LSU. 2018 LSU at Odron year two, he was hired by Joe Oliva, a guy who, an athletic director who had a lot of people above him uh, quickly question his hire and were very quick to say, maybe this isn't working out. And they had some buyer's remorse with that Odron. He was on every hot seat list in America entering 2018. And of course, there was the daunting schedule as well. What did that Odron do at the end of spring in 2018? Went out, got Joe Burrow. I'm not saying that JT Daniels is Joe Burrow by any stretch of the imagination, but you have to figure out the game's most important position. This isn't Boise State. You can't expect to just out scheme everybody to be able to win nine, 10 games in this league. It is too difficult. That's the other part of this thing. That schedule is daunting, real daunting. I think there are probably six teams on Auburn's preseason schedule who are going to start off in the top 25. Oh, by the way, you got to go to Alabama. You got to go to Georgia as well. It's one of those years. So I look at all of that and I say, well, I could still also close my eyes and I could see a scenario in which Auburn starts off 5-0 and and they're going to, to Georgia, that they have won all five of their home games to start the year. They're playing in that game. College game day is in the house. I know Bear Felica was tweeting about this and I can just picture Herbie and Pollock praising Auburn, praising Brian Harris and saying, good for them. They figured this thing out. They were able to get on the same page. And what a shame it would have been if he would have been fired before year two. And to a certain extent, I agree with that. But at the same time, it's still not the full schedule. And I now look at this situation. I wonder, what does Brian Harson have to do to save his job? I don't know that from a recruiting standpoint, he's really going to all of a sudden improve. Because what that administration did was just give everybody all this negative recruiting material. And for a guy who was an outsider to begin with, 21 of his last 25 years in Idaho, he didn't exactly all of a sudden bolster his ability to recruit with the week that he had, with the staff departures that he had, with the staff decisions that he's had. And I think that all of a sudden gets way, way more difficult. But I look at this situation now and I say, what does he have to do? Probably a top 15 season, Right. If you're going seven and five again, are we talking about Brian Harson having a year three? Or are we instead talking about that $15 million buyout? Probably the latter. That's probably going to be the case. And Brian Harson, you have to know that. And if this week didn't tell you that, I don't know what will. <laughs> you should have that sense of urgency. You should not treat this as a situation in which you're out of the woods. All is fine when we're not talking about winning and losing football games in February, when you can go to a basketball game and you can get a standing ovation. I, I would have applauded you as well because that week probably sucked. But at the same time, I'm going into this knowing that my job is on the line. And if we start off and I have four and three, you're going to hear that noise. You absolutely will. I don't think Brian Harson's out of the woods yet. I think he's got a fascinating year ahead. I think seeing him come out of this the way that he has 
That's got to be the momentum that he builds on. He's got to get support from the top down, even including that locker room where he's got current players who are liking posts from former players about mistreatment of Parson. You can't have any of that. You've all got to be on the same page or else we won't be talking about 2004 at all.